7 same colored bishops, bishop and pawn versus bishop. Again a simple but somehow important chapter. Endings with same colored bishops arise with reasonably frequency. When there are many pawns on the board, the playing technique is easy and well known, especially the concept of the bad bishop. However, with just one pawn, many players ignore an essential defensive method, rear opposition, which we will see in endings 34 and 35. Since this is not an intuitive idea, few players find it if they do not know it. Even distinguished players have resigned in drawn positions. Here we must acknowledge the labor of Averbach and Centurini, who studied almost all possible positions in great detail before the advent of computers and Nailamov end game table bases. Thanks to the labor of these great analysts, we can state that there is a series of very clear positions which help us find our way with ease. We could talk about four basic cases, actually, I will list them that way in the annotations but, since I have more confidence in descriptive headings, I will not label these endings as first case, second case, and so on, though some readers may prefer that system. It is easy to see that, if the defending king stands on a square in front of the pawn opposite to the bishop's color, it is an ironclad draw. There is no need for analysis here, we can call this scenario the zero case. The ending becomes interesting when the defending king cannot secure a position in front of the pawn. Ending 33, driving off the defending yen. Here we have what we could classify as the first case, the stronger side's king near his pawn and ready to offer a bishop trade, and the defending king far away. Then the stronger side usually wins with a standard maneuver, driving off the enemy bishop from the diagonals which cross the pawn's path. Bishop h5 f3. White is ready to move the bishop to c6, the ideal square. Trying to trade bishops on d7 also wins, but then the black bishop could relocate and offer resistance from the other diagonal, and the driving off process would be longer. It is easy to see that, in order to drive off the defending bishop, the bishop swap has to be arranged where it does not interfere with the advance of the pawn. While this is obvious, the consequences are important for the theory of this ending. Bishop b5 a4. Bishop f3 c6. The black bishop has to leave or allow the exchange. Bishop a4 captures c6. King c7 captures c6. King f8 e8. King c6 c7. And the pawn promotes. It has been easy. Conclusion. Without the support of the defending king, the bishop can always be ousted from the diagonals which control the advances of the pawn. Of course, then it is clear that the game is won if the pawn crosses the last blockade square. 